Welcome back to another video tutorial on how you can purchase your own HDB resale property here in Singapore. My name is Agent Franz and for this episode, I'm going to show you the costs involved in buying your own HDB property. So let's get started. As you can see in front of your screen, I have here a Google Sheet which I prepared for all my client buyers. If you would look closely, you would find that this table is broken into several parts. The first portion is where you need to place your projected purchase price. And after that, there is this table called cash where you need to key in the cash component of the purchase. Right beside it is the CPF table. So this table will tell you how much CPF is going to be needed for purchasing your property. And I've also prepared a projected timeline on the table below. So this will tell you what are the items that you need to prepare for, when do you need it, and how much it will cost. Okay, so let's start to fill out this form. Let's just assume that you're going to buy an HDB property worth 400000 type 400,000 here okay so this is the amount that you can find in the option to purchase we also have the valuation price so in the event that the valuation price is higher than the purchase price this is what we call a below value transaction but on the opposite side if the valuation price turned out to be lower than the purchase price then there will be a cov component okay so let's just assume that the valuation price is 390000 So what I'm saying here is we agreed to pay 400000 for the property. But after doing a valuation, it turned out that it's just worth 390000 So that means there's a 10000 difference that will be paid in the form of cash, which is what we call cash over valuation. But for this sample computation, Let's just assume that the valuation price matches the purchase price. So let me just place 400,000 here as well. Okay. So this is saying that our HDB purchase price is 400,000, which is written on the option to purchase. And the valuation price turned out to be 400,000 as well. I will have a separate video showing you how or where to see this valuation price. Okay, moving on, you need to take a bank loan of 300000 So let's talk about the cash component first. Okay, and since we are permanent resident and we are taking a bank loan, there is a 5% minimum cash that needs to be paid. So the 5% of 400000 is 20000 So I just place 20000 here. I've also written down here some miscellaneous expenses $500 or less if you're engaging the services of a agent then the normal agent's commission is 1% plus GST so that amount will amount to a total of 4280 and in the event that you don't have enough CPF to cover for the purchase then we will add the value in this portion but if you have enough CPF cover for the sale then this will be zero okay so the total of this five items will be $24,780. So what is this telling us? If we are going to purchase an HDB resale property worth $400,000, we need to prepare a cash worth $24,780. Okay, moving on to the CPF table. So your CPF can be used to pay for your stamp fees, the 20%, the lawyer's fee, and the insurance or the home protection scheme. So let's look at it one by one. Okay, first item is the stamp fees. This will be paid to the government. So if we are going to purchase a 400,000 worth of HDB, then the total stamp fees will be 27,100. You can see from here the breakdown. I would like to highlight that since we are permanent resident, we need to pay this additional buyer's stamp duty, which is 5% of the total purchase price. On top of the stamp fees, we also need to pay the 20%. As I've mentioned earlier, 
the bank will only pay the 75% of the purchase price. So that leaves us with the 25%, where 5% will be in cash and the 20% will be from your CPF. Item number three is the lawyer's fee. This is just an estimate, it's roughly 3,000. And item number four is the insurance. Estimated is 1,600, assuming the buyers are husband and wife. This is what we call the home protection scheme. Okay, so if we add all the four items together, it will amount to 91,700. Okay, so now let us check the projected timeline for the purchase. Let us assume that you have signed the option to purchase on 1st of October. So the next thing you need to do after signing that is to register the intent to buy. On the same day, I will put a link somewhere here on this top right hand corner. I have, I have prepared a separate video for that. Okay. And then uh, by that time, you would have already paid $1,000 for the option fee. Okay. The following day, you or your property agent should have requested a valuation for the flat. So that will cost you $120. And it will take about 7 or 1 week, 7 days or 1 week for it to be released. So during that time, you can source out for your banker and your law firm. Okay. So once you're happy with your valuation result, you've already secured a bank loan and a law firm to service your conveyancing, then you can opt to exercise the option. You need to pay the 4000 I have it in here. So the following day after you have exercised the option, you need to submit the case to HDB and that will cost you $80. So once it is done, they will send you an SMS notification. The next thing you need to do is to set an appointment with your law firm where you need to sign the necessary transfer documents regarding the sale. They will also give you a computation similar to this. The next thing to do is just to wait until the completion date which HDB will also notify you. So as you can see here, I've broken down the expenses. So this 24780 will tally with the cash required for the purchase of the HDB flat. Common questions I receive is that is my 1000 deposit and 4000 deposit included in this 24780? Well, this form illustrates that it is already included. So for those people who would want to have a copy of this sample computation, you just need to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and put your email on the comment section, and I will send you the link to this Google Sheet. Thanks for watching.